Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome to the end of Season 2, the final video with the Lathrixian Insane Asylum. It's been a really good time, but all good things must come to an end. And thankfully, not for all that long. Season 3 should be out fairly soon. As many of you know, there is a brand new patch hitting the game very, very soon. It's already available in the Unstable branch and is very soon to be hitting the regular branch over on Steam, in which I'll start playing it, which is the Thermal Upgrade patch, which means heat now works in a much more logical way. There are whole new biomes, whole new plants, and a load of tweaks to the AI, the balancing, overall it's a massive patch which will drastically change the best way of playing the game. Now this isn't something I was aware at the time of recording this video, or at least I wasn't aware just how close the new patch was and most importantly the fact that the old saves are not compatible with the new saves, or at least they're not currently compatible on the beta branch, but even if they do become compatible when they come over to the regular branch, I will still want to make a new world because these changes are absolutely huge and trying to incorporate them into our base would be absolute insanity, although I do think, at least from the info I have managed to find so far, that it simply will never be compatible, which makes complete sense. So either way, let's get into the video which I recorded in the past, and then I'll be here to talk again at the very end, just to say what I would have done if I had more time to continue with the game, rather than just doing stuff which ultimately is pointless, since a brand new world will need to be created very, very soon. So, thank you for listening, and into the video in which I talk about things which are going to be removed soon. Now, off camera, I was doing a bit of a test. This is why these cycles have sort of skipped ahead a little bit. A lot of people were saying, why don't you just make a vacuum, put water into the vacuum via a pipe, and then of course the water will vaporize. It will evaporate and become water vapor. The problem is, you can't really make a true vacuum in this game using the gas pumps. No matter how hard you try, it's just not a feasible option. Perhaps it is, perhaps I'm wrong, but even if it is the case, you can do this in the game, it seems like it's very, very difficult. Because this has been going on now for about six cycles, and it's still nowhere near a vacuum. I've also pumped in water, and it simply sits at the bottom until you eventually release it. It's a cool concept, but sadly pressure doesn't seem to work in the way you would like it to just yet. So then, the question is, how are we going to get unlimited power? And there are two different avenues we could use. The first is because we are making unlimited water, we could start creating electrolyzers. Now, electrolyzers consume 120 power and 1,000 grams of water to produce 888 grams of oxygen and, most importantly for our power reserve, 112 grams of hydrogen. Now, this hydrogen can then be used by the hydrogen generator to produce 800 watts of power for every 100 grams of hydrogen consumed. So essentially, if we can supply unlimited water, we will get unlimited power out of this closed system, which honestly is a very, very good deal indeed. But this does require quite a bit of infrastructure, and I'm not sure if that would be the best thing to try and do right now, especially since we have to deal with the heat being produced by the generator, we have to have the room set up correctly, it could be quite annoying to do. The other option, of course, is the much simpler option, the manual generators. Nice, simple, you put your minion into the generator, they run around and you produce power, and they get a nice healthy bit of exercise. It's actually likely the best option. It also means we could get another duplicant just to run the generator constantly. 400 watts is actually surprisingly powerful considering the coal generators only produce 600. So we have three of these and when they're all active, it powers everything without bother. So if we had four of these, for instance, it would pretty much do the same thing with a slight 
difference in power level, so we'd actually need about five of these running. But they are a lot more reliable, and duplicants are much happier to use the manual generator than they are to put coal in the coal generators. Thankfully, in the next patch, which will be the next episode in the future, they have actually set it now so generators will have correct priority. At the moment, they don't really use them correctly, even when they're set to nine, which they are right now. So I think we could do then is convert the top here into a manual generator section. I'm also aware that four of these would be 200 watts less than three of these. So five is a bit difficult because then it would only leave two duplicants to do all of the other jobs. But thankfully at this point, that's actually very little. It's changing the filter on the toilet section and it's grabbing slime from the puffs. That is actually it in terms of needed duties. So that's what I think I will do then. So one, two, three, four, five. We'll of course mop up this section. Plink. Now thankfully they can actually jump down here, no bother. So this, although it may look silly, is fine. But I will still change it because it, it's currently far too inefficient. And then we simply run these over to here. Yay for minions in hamster wheels. Then finally, we need a new duplicate and then a new bed, and then to make this place nice in terms of the decor. So, this is very, very important. As you can see, right now, it is hideous. Half because it's just hideous, and half because there's lots of debris and stuff that we clearly need to clean up. That should at least help alleviate that a little bit. Okay, so, ooh, uncultured is really good. However, flatulent is really annoying. Destructive is good. At least in terms of destructive versus vomiting. I think we're going to go with Eugene here. He has good stuff. Yep, I'm going with him. Good. Print. A little while later, and the power room is almost complete, along with some statues, most of the debris being removed, and for now, an algae deoxidizer, just because up here had almost no oxygen because of our failed attempt at placing the gas permeable tiles before. So as soon as this place is a little bit easier to breathe in, I'm going to turn it off and actually likely destroy it. That way, the minus decor from the deoxidizer is no longer affecting this area. We are so close to having a sustainable base. I've also got two new people, so that we now have nine in total, so that I can ha add one more manual generator if I so desire. We've also got a load of slime, so well done to the puffs. They're doing their job perfectly. Perfect puffs. Pleasantly perfect puffs. Things are still looking very, very good. We're not running out of water. We are now actually producing enough oxygen. This room is now breathable, and most of the decorations have been placed. All we need to do now is calm everyone down, because some of them are still pretty darn annoyed at things, which I can't blame them. There is essentially urine on the floor up here. Let's pretend that's just foul water, but everything's good. The only thing right now which we're suffering from is that we are losing algae. We're fine for slime, but algae is going down. The reason being is just we haven't been powering the bio distillers, so we haven't been making any algae from the slime. So hopefully once all this is finished and we can get them on the manual generators permanently, the bio distillers will be on 24 seven and everything will be fixed. And then, I can safely say this is a permanently sustainable build, which is amazing and happiness building. I'm good with words. Finally, everyone is calm, and now they are, things are clicking into place even faster. I'm going to make a sixth manual generator, and with that, everything without fail can run perfectly. And since now all the jobs are pretty easy ones, it shouldn't be too difficult for the remaining five people, the remaining four people rather, to get those jobs done without issue and any little odd jobs I so require. Which, honestly, there's not all that many left. The only thing I do really want to do is improve the steam purification section because it's not dealing with the water quite as fast as I would like. Wonderful, wonderful. All of the plants are now back to being healthy and our calories are increasing. We are getting more food per day than we are using up. 
So with that, I do believe we are essentially self-reliant. The algae is still a bit of an issue, but that's because we're currently relying far too much on the deoxidizers. Right now, I'm improving the steam section so that we can get some more water, so that we can move back to the algae terrariums, which of course use less algae per oxygen produced. These are just kind of awful. But I needed to replace all this pressure, so it was a necessary annoyance. And here we are then, at the end of the video, like I promised, here I am yet again, around about five seconds after recording the intro. Yay for chronological order being absolutely messed up. So, as you saw, the base was very, very close to being completely self-sustaining. The few things I would need to do in order to make sure everything was working perfectly would be to increase the size of the steam room so the steam was being condensed a lot quicker, because even though the steam had got up over halfway through the cooling tower, it was still cooling down far too slowly because of lack of surface area. That needed to be fixed. The second thing would be one of the carbon dioxide scrubbers, the air scrubbers, whatever they're called, which uses water, produces contaminated water, and uses energy to simply remove carbon dioxide from the base, from wherever it's standing. After that, we could have always added one of the oxidizers, which takes away the hydrogen and the oxygen from the water, effectively destroying the water, and produces hydrogen and oxygen. The hydrogen goes and floats to the top of the base, in which we could easily make a hydrogen generator. Other than that, it was just little things, like adding two extra biodistillers, which I did and didn't record, which really helps, and a few minor tweaks like that. A lot of things in which we simply made things more efficient. As soon as the efficiency was increased, everything was going fantastically. So, a decent end to the second season, and hopefully in the next season, since we're starting as soon as the patch comes out, we can get to this stage once again in a more complex game. So, if you have enjoyed the video and wish to see Oxygen Not Included continued in the next series, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, it helps out me, helps out the channel, and ensures that Season 3 will eventually arrive. Sorry again for the shortish vi short video, and goodbye. Also, I am remarkably tired right now. I've just got back from a two-day trip back to England. Thank you for listening, and goodbye. Thank you.